Hi, I'm Reagan Tunstall, and thank you for joining me for our Wednesday video. Today, we're going to be talking about the small group lesson. And I love to do a sports theme with this because the small group lesson is our huddle. And as you know, in a huddle, we have our coach and then our key players. Each player has a different unique set of skills. And what we're going to do as the coach is we're going to assess what they know, how they know it, and we're going to look at our new learning, which is what we're covering in small group, and we're going to push our team as far down the field as we can with the best play that we can come up with to ultimately get us to mastery or a touchdown. So today I'm gonna to share how we do that in the small group setting. Um, before I get into it, I do wanna say that small group instruction is the heart of the guided math structure. This time that we spend with our students in this huddle is why we do the guided math structure. So our focus here is our new standards. This is where our new instruction is happening. We introduce and we conceptualize in the mini lesson with whole group, but then we pull our students to the small group table in order to maximize that instruction, in order to let them explore that instruction, that problem solving with us in close proximity. The reason we do this is so that we can target their needs, we can um, fix any misconceptions because they're happening right in front of us, and we can ultimately bring them to mastery and beyond. So elevating what they understand, introducing new strategies, introducing new methods of problem solving, and exposing them to as much information as we can. Personally, I was doing centers, so I thought I was doing guided math, um, but through the years and through the research, um, of course, I realized that guided math is really, it's not centers, it's small group instruction. The centers that we put out are going to help spiral review, they're going to help solidify, they're going to help apply and practice math concepts that we teach, but the teaching is happening in small group. And we don't just meet with our strugglers, we meet with everyone. You may not meet with everyone every single day based on class size, based on time of math block or math block minutes, but ultimately, we want to instruct every student in small group so that they have the best chance. And once you do that, once you set up that schedule that works for you, what you'll find is that you are seeing gains, leaps, bounds, huge momentum and connections and um, growth in those kids because they're getting that consistent instruction from you at a level that just absolutely makes sense and pushes them so much further than that traditional math block where their needs were sometimes being hit but not always. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to assess our key players. We're going to say, um, sorry, we're going to see if they are um, which level of the math continuum they're on. Are they still very concrete? Are they understanding representational or pictorial forms? Or are they ready to move into the numbers and the um, abstract problem solving? So my goal as the teacher or the coach is to see where they are developmentally with our particular instruction and concept and skill and provide those unique strategies or instruction or even um, a chunk of instruction that is the right amount just for them. So you'll know because as you go through to instruct, you'll plan a lesson, but then you'll see what's happening right in front of you and you'll adjust. So differentiation isn't about um, some elaborate extra lesson plan. It is truly being in the moment with the student introducing them to the strategy that's right for them, for where they are, for how you're seeing them problem solve in front of you, and um, processing through that. So whether we need a more supported level of instruction or whether we need to step back and let them kind of be challenged and um, work through something to ultimately get to their goal, depending 
that depends on what they are sh doing in front of you. So I'm gonna use fourth grade guided math to share some lessons with you that are gonna be done in small group and what I as the teacher am going to focus on and worry about. So I took the fourth grade unit four guided math kit and just put it in this cute little black tote in order. So I've got my teacher's guide. This is gonna give me my uh, math mini lesson and my small group instruction. And then I've got the cards and math mats and work that we're going to be doing in small group. Those baggies are in order in this little tote. Um, so in the decimals unit, unit four, we are going to be exposed to understanding decimals, to representing them in many different ways, from um, making a model on a hundredths grid, to plotting them on a number line, to um, representing different values in different ways throughout these lessons. And it's building up to the following unit um, where we take it even further. We're gonna be adding and subtracting decimals um, and, and more. So um, these are going in order and the first lesson, lesson two, we've got math mats and math cards. They're gonna be representing um, decimals that they come up with by counting a set of coins. So let's say it's 73 cents. They would then color and represent that on six different hundredths grids. So they would be working through these cards and those are differentiated. Um, making a model and rep instead of coloring it in to, to show the decimal, they're now writing in the decimal form um, and so on. It just goes on and on and it exposes them to um, many different ways because we want them ultimately to have that ad adaptive reasoning and to be familiar with these concepts no matter how they see it. Next, we're going to be able to um, say what a designated plot point is when they have a range of decimals. And then they will also be writing in all of the different plot points. Here, we're ordering decimals from greatest to least. Um, I think I showed you that one. This one, we're adding and subtracting decimals and we're going to use the graph paper math mat to help us do that. Now, I give my students um, black expo markers because these are white and white. So they get their own marker and they get their own eraser, which is a boy's sock. Um, we just put the sock on the non-writing hand and we use the other hand to write. I like to use black just because it covers the, the ugly residue and then you just throw them in the wash. Um, and you're ready to go. So um, in the small group though, this is where I'm going to give my students a set of cards or the work mats. And as they are working through those skills and concepts right in front of me, I'm going to focus in on, is this strategy um, the best one? Is it helping them grow? Is it making that connection? Um, is this level of card the right level? Do I need to find different set of cards that we work through together. And I'm also thinking about my delivery. So we can't differentiate our standard. We have to teach a certain standard, but how much information, information am I giving them and how supported is my teaching method? So knowing your group of students and, and even individuals within that group and what they need. So that's truly the small group lesson. In the guided math book, and I believe you can see pretty well without the glare here, um, each lesson gives you that lesson plan. We have our essential question, our lesson objective. This was our math mini lesson, which we do whole group. Underneath that, we have our lesson question discussion, I'm sorry, lesson discussion questions, the materials that we'll find in the kit, or if there's manipulatives, what we might need to help students to um, see the concrete and then here is our small group lesson and we're as you can see this is a majority of that math block time I'm not spending 55% of my math block with one group that is whether I want to rotate through two or three or four or you know six it's up to you your number of math minutes and how you break that up but your small group lesson is here and it's going to, again, direct you to a more detailed and differentiated um, lesson that ties in with that 
mini lesson that you did whole group. And then underneath there, you'll find your remediation, your on level, and your enrich. So in each unit for guided math, there are 19 lesson plans. And then, um, well, there's 20 really. The first one is your pre-assessment for grades three, four, and five. And since I'm talking about fourth grade, the first lesson is always your pre-assessment so you can form those groups. Your um, lessons two through 18 are going to be teaching to those standards. And then lesson 19 is always a review. So it's a math hunt and it's a review of the skills learned. And then lesson 20 is your unit assessment. So within all of those lessons, we've got um, interactive notebook, note taking we've got problem of the day every day which is going to be our math warm-up we've got weekly quizzes all of those things are built into the program but the heart of the guided math program is the small group instruction so that's why each kit has the ready-made materials for you and in multiple sets because we expect that you'll have four to six students with you in each group so I hope that helps clarify some about your small group team huddle. And uh, thank you for joining me. I'll see you next Wednesday.